Hello, in this lesson I'm going to demonstrate to you how to dissect a squid. So before we get started, the materials that you require for this dissection are a freshly thawed or fresh squid, a knife or a razor blade, some paper toweling, a hand lens or magnifier, and you may want some toothpaste for after to take the smell of the squid off your hands. This is a kitchen dissection, which means that we are dissecting an animal that can be prepared after to eat. So it's very important to practice safe food techniques and that all to make sure that all of your materials and your hands have been previously cleaned. This lesson is for senior biology students studying invertebrates and the phylum is mollusks or the soft body animals and the class is cephalopoda. So come on in, we'll do the dissection. You will notice that the squid has a small tube sticking out of it. So see, I'll just put my finger in here to show you the tube. And it is relatively in between its eyes. This is called the funnel or the siphon. So what I want you to do is to place the squid flat on your work surface with that funnel side up. Okay. Now let's locate some key external parts. Here, I put this stick in here, is the funnel or the siphon. There are two long tentacles and these much longer tentacles shoot out to grab or capture the prey and pull it into the head. There are eight shorter arms used to rip apart the prey and to stuff it into the center where the mouth is. We have two large eyes. As I said, the mouth area is in the center here. These are called fins, the mantle, and the squid's skin. Notice that the squid has many, many suckers on the arms and fewer on the tentacles. There's just a few on the very tips of the tentacles. If we look more closely using the hand lens, we can see that the suckers are relatively different sizes and they are sticky and they grasp the prey firmly. If we went even closer in on this, we wouldn't see that they have a set of very fine teeth surrounding each of the sucker discs and this also helps them to hold on to the prey. Looking closer, the mantle is the outside body of the squid. It fits like a hat over the rest of the inner body and protects the organs. It also secretes the shell when it's present. Notice how flexible the funnel or the siphon is. A squid's going to use this siphon for swimming. The squid squirts water from inside the mantle, so there's water inside here, and it squirts it out through the funnel. The direction it swims depends on which way the funnel is aimed. The squid are among the fastest invertebrates on Earth, speeding through the water at up to 40 kilometers per hour. They can move fast because of this jet propulsion. Let's look more closely at the mouth area. What I'm going to do is pop this jelly, what we call buccal mass, out, and inside you'll we'll find there's two parts to the mouth called a beak. This is made up of the same stuff as human fingernails called keratin. If I can open and close the parts to the beak, I'd notice or I can imagine how the squid uses those strong parts to take a bite out of its prey. Inside here, there are also some structures, and they're called radula. 
is like a grate that helps to grate the food before it goes down the esophagus. That's what a rasp is. And squid are very successful predators feeding on fish, shrimp, and other smaller animals like that. Now let's explore the eye. If I take, isolate one eyeball, I, I can first of all notice there is no eyelid. A squid's going to control the amount of light that comes into their eye by opening and closing a slitted pupil. They focus on something by moving a hard, clear lens back and forth within the eye. Let's take a look at in, inside that eyeball. So I'm just going to cut away at it. Oops. And what I'm really looking for is a small translucent lens which makes up the inner part of the eye. Squids have marvelous sight. Their eyes are very similar to fish eyes. And it has been reported that some squid can even see color. Interesting enough that squid can't smell because they have no noses. In between the eyeballs is the brain. If we cut it open Notice there's a creamy white area. That's the brain. And it's going to be surrounded by a brain case that helps to make it part of the skeleton of the squid. And I'm sure you know that squid are extremely intelligent animals. Now, <clears throat> take a look at the fins. These act as rudders and they steer the squid where they want to go. The squid is a highly motile predator. Now I'll use my finger to lift open the mantle behind the funnel, separating the mantle from the internal organs. Picking up the mantle, flesh, I'm going to keep it tight and cut along what we call the ventral or the midline of the mantle. Notice I'll have the blade away from me. I need to make sure that everything's lifted away so that I don't cut the internal organs. And I fold the mantle layers open. The first thing we should do is determine the sex of the squid. To have a female, I only need to look for a mass of eggs in the ovary towards the tail end of the squid. There's my mass of eggs. This is a female. For the, a male species, we need to look for an obvious male part. It looks like a small snail shell, and this part is called the seminal vesicle. So this is a male. Another noticeable feature between the males and the females is that generally the female is a much larger species than the male. The long feathery structures on both sides of the squid are specialty respiratory structures called gills. They are attached to the sides of the mantle and they extend along the anterior, what we call half of the mantle. This silvery black structure is the ink sac. It lies connected to a part called the intestine. The squid has a storage of ink and it shoots it out to cloud the water when it's in, in danger. The final thing I'm going to show you is a lightweight internal skeleton. This is called a pan. It's long and it's a clear structure like the inside of a pan and it acts as a support beam so the squid doesn't flop and fold. You might be interested to know that a relative of the squid, the octopus, has no skeleton at all and that the squid only has this thin pan compared to a nautilus which has a thick outer shell. 
we can clean up our material by throwing away the guts or the visceral mass. So I'm going to keep the tentacles and the arms and make sure that the beak and brain are out of there. And I'm going to keep the mantle and the fins. All the rest of the visceral mass gets discarded. And what I recommend you do is rewash and dry these saved parts, then cut them into smaller bite-sized chunks, and follow a recipe for Cala Maria. I hope that you found this online squid demonstration dissection useful. Thank you! Mm -hmm.